Skin color and race, misconceptions and realities. There are many concepts in our society that are accepted as common knowledge. For an example, if I were to say that our global community was made up of several different races, it would be rare to find anyone who would take exception to this claim. While many accept the concept that there are multiple races amongst the human family as common knowledge, examining more closely the origin of the race classification system, the available DNA evidence, and how the skin adapts to its environmental conditions will prove that this is not the case. In this presentation, we'll examine the creation of the races as we know them today according to Johann Friedrich Blumenbach's 1775 race classification system, take a look at the DNA evidence provided by Omoto and Lorcan that demonstrated all in the human family are virtually identical, and Drs. Bologna and Orlo will give us a look into the skin and how it adapts to its environmental conditions as a protection for the body. In 1776, Johann Friedrich Blumenbach's 1775 dissertation entitled On the Natural Varieties of Mankind was first published. In this work, he would be the very first to classify the human family into five different races he called the human races, blacks, whites, yellow, red, and brown. Yes, Blumenbach himself created, created the system of race classification that we actually have widely adopted and make us believe we're different. His work was based on the theory that aptitude, personality, and character could be determined by skin color as well as the size and the shape of a person's skull. This theory was so influential that it was adopted by other researchers and encouraged the use and the study of scientific methods to try to find differences amongst humans to support the idea of different races and racial superiority and inferiority. Many years later, Blumenbach would meet an African woman while in Switzerland that he described her as so beautiful to fall in love with, according to Bhopal. This event and further studies led him to conclude that aptitude, personality, and character could not be determined by skin color or the size or the shape of the skull, and that his earlier theories that were so widely accepted were actually wrong. However, these findings were far less influential than his earlier findings, and his flawed system of classifying humans into races would be commonly accepted and widely taught as though it were accurate and true. Thus, classifying humans into racial categories of black, white, yellow, red, and brown was based on a flawed theory and acknowledged wrong by the creator of the concept. Now, to discover our scientific similarities, we must take a look at our DNA. According to Amoto and Lorcan, DNA is composed of over 3 billion base pairs that are compacted into over 35,000 genes, of which only 3 to 4 have anything to do with determining our skin color. This makes all in the human family 99.99% alike. Finally, I've created this illustration to help see what takes place under the skin that causes our skin color to vary. Uh, according to Dr. Bologna and Orlo, there are two types of melanin in the human hair and skin. Eumelanin, which is brown to black in color, and pheomelanin, which is yellow to red in color. The determination of which is produced uh, depends on the interaction on the surface of the melanocyte. So here we have the melanocyte here, and we've got a couple different things going on. First of all, you have a constant, which is the melanocortin 1 receptor, the MC1R, and it is going to be fused with one of two things, either the MSH, the melanin stimulant hormone, stimulating hormone, or the ASIP, which is the agouti signaling protein. When, it is, when the MC1R is fused with the MSH, which is caused by intense heat or UV rays, it produces the eumelanin, which is brown to black, uh, producing a darker skin color, which serve as a protection from the sun, much like sunblock. Uh, when on the surface of the melanocyte, the MC1R is fused with the ASIP, the agouti signaling protein, which is caused by a lack of intense heat or UV rays, it produces pheomelanin, which is again yellow to red in color, which produces a lighter skin, which allows more sun in to synthesize vitamin D for the preservation of life. 
So while many people accept the concept that there are multiple races amongst the human family as common knowledge, examining more closely the origins of the race classification system, DNA evidence, and how the skin adapts to its environmental conditions will prove that this is not the case. With this evidence before us, we must conclude that the concept of classifying humans into racial categories of black, whites, yellow, red, and brown was based on a flawed theory and acknowledged wrong by the inventor of the concept, and is a social concept as stated by J. Craig Venter, not a scientific one. We must also acknowledge that the organs of the body adapt to environmental conditions and the skin, according to the American Academy of Dermatology, being the largest organ of the body is no exception. We are all part of one race, the human race. Are there any questions? Yes. If the terms black and white referring to man doesn't exist until the late, the late 1700s, how do you explain the use of black and white in the scriptures referring to man? That's an excellent question. You know, seeing that the terms were first published in 1776, it's impossible that the use of the words black and white in the scriptures uh, referring to man have anything to do with race or skin color. Uh, as demonstrated in segment two of the Blacks in the Scriptures DVD series by Gray and Perkins, the black and white in relationship to man uh, is referring to a spiritual or an emotional state, uh, referring to either wickedness or righteousness, and has nothing to do with actual skin color. Excellent. If Blumenbach admitted his era, why has the concept become so widely accepted throughout the world? Well, unfortunately, many in society have personal reasons and thus are motivated to hold on to and to further advance prejudice, segregation, and incorrect teachings. Uh, Offer Gerstein, Ph.D. of Relationship Matters, uh, Understanding Your Partner's Personality, discusses how each individual in the human family is in continual pursuit of safety and personal security through seeking identity by grouping with those they deem have commonalities uh, in order to feel better about themselves. So how would you explain how hair texture became different? Again, this is a great question and a common one as well. To date, studies are inconclusive and have not uh, and the scientists have not identified variant genes that determine uh, hair texture according to doctors Medlin, Zhu, and Martin. Thank you.